Hey YouTube, Matt back and today it's time to empty the dust collector. Uh, this thing has been in the background on any number of the videos that I've shot and I've gotten some comments and questions. Uh, this obviously is another Harbor Freight special and people want to know A, is the unit itself any good and B, what the heck did I do to it? Because uh, this is obviously not the factory configuration. So first things first, let me get this half of the dust collector out of the way so we can take a look at the meat of the modifications that I've done to it. Separating the impeller from the separator slash filter unit is pretty easy. They're only attached with a short piece of hose and two hose clamps. This is a 10 millimeter socket that goes on here, or you can use a Phillips screwdriver. Same kind of connection going from the cyclone separator up into the impeller. And the inlet connection to the separator is just taped. And once you have everything disconnected, the unit just rolls free. Alrighty, here's step one of the improvement process. I'm gonna move the barrel from sitting on the cart with the filter onto these furniture dollies. These are yet another Harbor Freight special. They are a whopping $4 each if you get them on sale. I have two of them wire tied together. Wire ties aren't the answer to all of humanity's problems. I don't, I don't know what is, maybe duct tape. Uh, anyway, these are gonna provide better wheels for moving this thing around. When it gets full, it can get heavy, and they're going to much better support the perimeter of this container. One of the things I really like about these fiber barrels is the lid system. It has a little catch on it so that there's no way that it could pop open by accident. But getting the band off is just a quick release. And then the whole thing lifts up. Well, inside we find the first piece of magic, if you will, to this uh, modification. This is what's known as a thine or thine baffle. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it, but it is a well-documented contraption out there on, on the internet. Essentially, you've got this mostly circular plate uh, with a lip out here. And what that does is it forms any barrel into a cyclone. That lip lines up with the inlet where the air comes in here, causing it to go around the barrel and the solids spin out essentially. They drop through the gap that's created by this, this cutout piece. Meanwhile, the air circulates around here in the top and eventually comes out this hole. Um, I'm not gonna go through the construction of the baffle. This is, again, a very, very well-documented thing out there online. And quite frankly, um, it's no more complicated than cutting out this shape to the correct size and spacing it from the lid the right amount. Um, and both of those rights are, are what you're gonna find in the documentation for the construction. I used threaded rod because it made the whole thing super easy to adjust. Uh, but if you wanted to cut wooden dowel rods or, or even square pieces or anything like that, it would certainly work. Uh, but the threaded rod gives you, you know, real fine tuned adjustability. You can measure this thing, make sure it's exactly level, exactly the right distance. And they have a nice low profile inside. The rod itself doesn't block much airflow inside the, the cyclonic part. I will never understand what it is that makes us as woodworkers enjoy looking at sawdust in buckets and barrels, but we all seem to. So here it is. Uh, if you were curious about how effective that baffle system is, you're looking at it. That is 18 inches deep, you know, on average or whatever, of sawdust, and a lot of it is really, really fine. In fact, almost all of it is fine stuff. I don't own a jointer, I don't own a thickness planer. So I don't have any of the machines that generate the nice big chips. Uh, this is all dust. While I have the camera set up like this, I want to show you how I did the inlet. This is a piece of five inch hard steel ducting like would be used in an air conditioning system. I found online a calculator that will generate paper templates for when you want to have one pipe intersect another pipe, and that's essentially what this barrel is. It's a big pipe with a little pipe coming in at some angle. I picked, I wanted it tangent to the side at 90 degrees. 
And what it does is it prints out paper templates, one of which you paste onto, in my case, the big pipe, and it gives you this teardrop shape that you cut out. Fiber barrels are really, really easy to cut a jigsaw with a fine tooth blade or even just a good sharp razor knife. You'll have to make a couple of, uh, couple of cuts with it, but you can, you can cut this stuff. It is just cardboard in the end. There's a second template that wraps around the pipe itself, tapes in place, and gives you the line to follow that you can cut with tin snips or again a saw or Dremel tool, whatever you're going to use to cut it. When you're done, what you get is this nice, mostly flush. I didn't, I didn't get it perfect, but basically these two things will fit together just about perfectly. Some of the designs I looked at had left tabs of the metal on this pipe to give you something to, to screw or put some sort of mechanical fastener in there. I decided to just go the epoxy route. I got some, some nice, thick, heavy, it's almost putty-like epoxy and have it all around the outside here and, and filled in the gap. And that does two things. It gives me a good, solid, sturdy connection. I would have no hesitation picking up this barrel by the pipe. It also gives me an airtight connection. The, the putty allows me to fill in any little gaps or, or voids or whatever where I didn't have my two cuts just perfect. Now, while all of that dust sitting in the fiber barrel might look great, it's only really impressive when you understand the total percentage of dust that ended up in the barrel. This is the second time that I have emptied this barrel since its original construction. I don't even remember when. This is what's in the bag. I have beaten the filter with a, a stick and gone around and, and tapped the bag. I've tried to get as much of it settled to the bottom as possible. And, and here it is. This is, this is not enough to, to pipe icing onto a couple of cupcakes. And this is two barrels full of stuff that's gone out the other way. Now, whatever you do, don't go breathe in all the dust you just collected when you empty the barrel. Take it outside and wear your respirator. Remember, there's glue and whatever you vacuumed off the floor mixed in with that wood dust. When you go to put the lid back on this barrel, the alignment is key. The high velocity air that's loaded with dust is supposed to come in and it's supposed to follow the lip on this baffle before it gets to the crack slot, whatever you want to call it, where the chips and dust drop out. The best thing to do is to make yourself some marks that line up with the pipe. Before I roll the barrel back in here, I want to show you what I did with the motor. The way this unit is designed, the motor is supposed to sit on the floor and it discharges straight up. The hose that comes out of here goes up and makes a sweeping bend and plugs into the side of the separator and the filter bag. In order to make the barrel work, I need draft coming straight out of the, the middle of the top of that thing. So I had to turn the motor 90 degrees and build this framing structure out of two by sixes behind it to essentially hang the motor unit from the wall. It's not a complicated thing to do, and of course I way overbuilt the whole thing as I always do, but this unit is heavy. This is a, this is a relatively good quality two horsepower motor that's on here, and I really didn't want it coming crash into the floor. It's all back together, and everything went 100% perfectly. No problems here. Yeah, right. Does that ever happen? The barrel is sitting, half sitting, back on the factory cart that came with the dust collector. Why? Well, because the barrel goes back in between the legs of my motor mount, and there's not room in between the legs of the motor mount for the furniture dollies that I wanted to use. So that's project for another day to facilitate something to hold that barrel a little better. I want to talk to you for just a minute about the performance you can expect out of a unit like this. It is by far the cheapest two horsepower dust collector that you're gonna find anywhere. Uh, even if it's not on sale or you don't have the 20% off coupon, it's still the cheapest one you're gonna find anywhere. 
So it begs the question, well, what are you getting for your money? Is it, is it worthwhile? And in my opinion, yes, this is one of the true Harbor Freight gems. There aren't many of them, but this thing is an absolute steal. The motor that's on here is probably worth the price of the entire dust collector, uh, especially if you get it on sale and, and with the coupon. It is an honest to God, two horse induction motor. It's totally enclosed, fan cooled, so it is exactly the right kind of motor for something like this dust collector. It is a 110 volt motor, which means in order to get the full two horsepower out of it, you're gonna have to have it connected to a 20 amp circuit. Uh, I have mine on a 15 amp breaker and I have popped it once or twice. For the most part, it runs great. Uh, but if you really, you put it under a load, you, you can blow a 15 amp breaker. So what are the compromises that you're making? Well, to start with, you've got the impeller that that beautiful motor is driving. In a competing two horsepower collector, that impeller is probably gonna be bigger. I forget whether this thing is 11 or 12 inches, but it's definitely on the small side for this horsepower class of machine. And what that means is that it just plain old doesn't move as much air. You're not getting as many cubic feet per minute of flow through this machine as you would in a machine that has a bigger impeller. Having said that, the smaller impeller is a lighter load on the motor. So if you're in a position like me where you only have a 15 amp breaker available to you and you're trying to run a two horsepower system off of it, the smaller impeller may actually turn out to be an advantage for you. The other place where they cheaped out on it is this bag. Now, in general, bags are awful on dust collection systems. They have very, very low uh, surface area for the amount of air that you're trying to move. What Harbor Freight has done is they have provided a five micron bag. And what does that mean? It means it filters out particles bigger than five microns. Well, that means that all the really dangerous stuff, the five micron and smaller particles, the ones you really wanna collect because they're the ones that get stuck in your lungs, they go right through this bag. Um, less than ideal from a health and safety perspective. Uh, from an airflow perspective, it's just the opposite. If you have nice big holes in the bag, then you get lots of airflow through the system. Either way, replacing this bag with a pleated paper filter would be a huge upgrade to the machine, both in terms of its collection efficiency and its airflow. That's something I'll probably do one of these days. Overall, I'm really happy with the system. The separator works better than I ever could have imagined. And even with the bag and the separator in place, and I'm only on a 15 amp outlet, I get enough airflow to get good collection from the tools that I have it hooked up to. I have short runs. I use all four inch hose, and I only have it connected to one thing at a time, all of which works in my favor. But when it's all said and done, while the whole thing is certainly not perfect, it is orders of magnitude better than not having any dust collection. I'm sure we can make it even better, but that's gonna have to wait for another day. Till then, stay safe, YouTube.